Now this time I was numb. Yeah. I couldn't believe it was happening again. I'm like, again? Yeah. Like, God, I mean, what is happening? I thought I we resolved, not resolved, but I thought yeah. that, you know, life would, mm. would turn out different. Mm. And so I was numb for the longest. I remember I, I, even crying. Yeah. I couldn't cry. Yeah. I mean, uh, man, I was numb. Mm. I remember during his funeral, I was leading choruses. I remember. everybody, welcome to Being Kambua. It's been a wonderful journeying with you so far, hearing your stories, uh, knowing where you're watching, listening from, also just letting me know what resonates with you. That has been so, so impactful for me. Remember that this is a place where we have conversations on um, motherhood, challenges that come along the way, things that we do not uh, foresee, but conversations that are so, so necessary that will sometimes make you uncomfortable, uh, but we need to have these conversations because the only way to break the stigma and the taboos surrounding loss, surrounding infertility and all these conversations is by talking about them. So I always bring you amazing, amazing people. And today I have, she's a personal friend. She's also a mother. She's a wife. She is a producer. I have to tell you guys, actually, <laughs> that I met her when she, <laughs> we worked in the same company mm -hmm. and she was a producer and our friendship grew from there. I'm so honored to have Masi. Hi, Masi. Hi. <laughs> Masi Omari. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, I'm used to being behind the scenes. Yes, you so are. So being in front of the scenes is new. <laughs> different. It's so foreign. <laughs> She's usually the one at the back saying, okay, camera one, okay. <laughs> and sending us instructions on what yeah, to do. whispering in your ear, Kambua look right. You yes. know. <laughs> Kambua sit up. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm on this side. So this is how it feels. Yes. Okay. Now I understand the pressure I give you in your ear. <laughs> Welcome to the hot seat, the, the other side thank of the you, camera, thank right? Thank you. I'm glad it's you. I'm doing this. <laughs> yes. Thank oh, you for having me. You're so welcome, Masi. Thank you for yeah. saying yes to me. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I know we usually have our, our dates, our catch up or whatever, yeah. many conversations. Yeah. Um, so this is different. We get to actually just bring our the convos that we have on our, you know, private time. Yeah. We're bringing it on camera. Yeah. That's really what we're doing, right? It is. Yeah, yeah. If you put it that way, I'm relaxed. I yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Masi, yeah. um, so I met you when we were working together. Yes. And we became friends. First of all, Masi, you're like one of the sweetest people I have oh, ever known in my life. I, yes, honestly. <laughs> and, you. So, and you are too. Thank you. Oh my gosh, guys, Kambua and, is just the sweetest. As in what you, you see on social media, it's not a tia piece. I mean, you're <laughs> so kind you. and thank so, you. yeah. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Um, so it was so easy for us to connect as friends. So I think my very early memories of you were when I really got to pay attention to, to who you are on a more personal level was uh -huh. when you and Omari, uh -huh. who was also working in the same company when you guys got married. And we just we just all kept saying, oh, they're so cute. You still are, you still are like the cute Thank couple, you. I know. And I want us to start from there because you know, when you get married and you got married fairly young, um, we all have so many dreams of how everything is gonna pan out, right? Uh -huh. So take us from the beginning, like you and Omari, Maybe you can tell us where you met and then tell us how the journey for, you know, you two saying I do started and the plans that you had for growing your family. So, yes, my name is Mercy. Uh, I'm a believer. Yes. So where it starts from citizen. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to say? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so we met at uh, Royal Media with yeah. my husband. Mm -hmm. So first of all, even just getting the opportunity at Royal Media was just godsend. Yeah. So I have been a believer from ever since I was young. Yeah. So I don't have those stories for, oh, I was in this world of wellness and, and then I turned. Yes. No, like from a little girl, mm -hmm. I've always trusted God. I've always yeah. you know, followed him. I've always... Mm -hmm. uh, served in church and, you know, professed my faith. Yeah. So even just how he guided me through campus, I finished campus, then I joined uh, Daystar, then mm -hmm. I finished 
then I got an internship at Citizen. I was like, wow, God, you're just amazing. You're yeah. opening up all these doors one after another. It mm-hmm. felt like all my ducks were lined up in a row because yeah. everything was just falling into place. Mm-hmm. So I do my internship. I, I click with you guys and the rest. And then mm-hmm. uh, one time the production manager calls me. He's like, what have you done to people? Have you paid people? Because <laughs> everyone is just coming to say that you need to be retained. Yes. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just doing my best. Favor. A favor. Mm. So I was like, wow, this is God's favor. Because like in our lot of internship, I think only three of us got employed. So yeah, I started wow. with a contract mm. and then I got employed. And so I'm there. I'm young. I'm 23. I'm, yeah. I'm directing. I'm leading news. I'm leading teams. I'm meeting all these amazing people. Yes. Like I used to see you on TV and then I'm here. Where I'm directing you. I'm like, yes. <gasps> God, how is this happening? I mm-hmm. mean, it's such favor. Yeah. And then I'm um, there focused with my work. I was like, I cannot date a media guy. <laughs> I mean, I had been warned. <laughs> media guys are Wait. the worst. Okay. As in, I had said that. <laughs> they so have a focused. reputation. They have a reputation. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yes. So I was focused. Yeah, I got hit on here and there. I don't know if I can say that. But <laughs> you can. <laughs> so I'm like, nah, mm. not happening. Yeah. And then... Omari happened. I don't even know. <laughs> what did Omari do that was so different from these other guys who had tried? Uh, I think he was real. Yeah. If you know Omari, yeah. he is real. What you see is what you get. Yes. There's no two two faces. There's yes. no, you know, cover, you know, cloaking yourself up in church or, you mm-hmm. know, he was just real and he was funny and we clicked yeah. and we just had a friendship. Yes. So it started off as friendship and then he's like, you know me, I'm serious. I'm not just here for jokes. <laughs> and... So yeah, one thing led to another. Yeah. Uh, he proposed. Yeah. We dated for about three years. He proposed. We got married. Yes. We did uh, a wedding. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he walked in as a rock. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were on the wedding show, yeah? In case, no, we refused. Oh, like, you refused. Yeah, we were like, we want a small, intimate okay. wedding, and yeah. we want cameras. You know, mm-hmm. we just want family and love. You know, yes. we don't want to act for the camera. Yes. Like, but how it ended up that it ended up trending on yeah, social media like, we're, we were seeing it everywhere <laughs> so one day i just uh, posted the video when it came out when yes. he came, walked out as a rock yeah and then i put it on uh, i uploaded it at night so the next day i'm, I'm waking up i'm seeing 20,000 views i'm like huh <laughs> after that i'm seeing 100,000 views within, within three days yes. it had circulated even in whatsapp groups mm. so someone will text you oh, i've seen omari's video walking in as a rock yes. Kidogo, Kidogo is on the trend. I mean, when the trend had Larry, I'm like, what has just happened? <laughs> but yeah, we're just having fun. It was yes. a nice day. We oh. enjoyed the wedding. Yeah. We're so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you you planned a wedding, you know how stressful it oh, is. Yeah. Like we saw, we thought it would be it would be small, but it ended up being big but beautiful and we loved it. Big in like the real African way. They tend yeah. to just go big. You're like, I want but a small a wedding. wedding is not yours. <laughs> We had said, ah, we want to do 300 people. Mm -hmm. Then the parents were like, 300 people is just one side of the family. (laughs) You've not even counted the friends. You've not counted the friends. So we had to magnify the numbers. It was stressful, but it was a beautiful day. We still got hands. And yeah, so our life begins Mm -hmm. uh, like six months in, I get pregnant. Yes. And then I remember that time, several people came and started telling me, wow, mercy the God you serve. Like, how amazing is that? Everything is just lining up. Wow. I mean, I'm doing well in my career. Yes. I'm here, I've gotten married. Yes. We're friends. I mean, I enjoyed my wedding. Mm-hmm. And now I'm pregnant six months in, and it wasn't a struggle per yeah. se. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, all I'd say is, oh, God is good. You know, just trust God. Yeah. Uh, and nothing else. Yeah. Which is the truth, right? Which is and the it's truth. the truth that you, you knew. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, the baby comes. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, 2017. Yes. So uh, I go, it was a bit of drama. I had to do a, three, a C-section. Yeah. Got the baby healing from a C-section and all that. Mm-hmm. And then he didn't leave for too long. And then he passed on suddenly. Mm. And so there I was like, I was in utter shock. Mm. I was in disbelief. I'm yeah. like, what is happening? Yeah. I mean, I had trusted God all my life. Uh, you know, I've served you, God. And so all the questions began. I had not been through any, th- any grief of that magnitude. Yeah. I'd lost a friend here, a friend there. Mm. But now when it's your baby, you've yeah. carried for nine months. Yeah. And he passes on just suddenly yeah. like that. Yeah. 
I mean, I was in shock. Yeah. So everything happened so fast, as in just that period is a blur. Yeah. But I remember the song that kept playing in my head was a Lauren Daigle song, mm -hmm. like I Will Trust You. So I remember even at the funeral, I was not able to speak. So mm -hmm. I just told those guys, uh, when it's my time to make a speech, yeah. just put the song I Will Trust You by Lauren Daigle, which yeah. really just says, when you don't move the mountain, I needed you to move. When you don't part the waters, mm. I wish that I could walk through. Yeah. When I don't get the answers, mm. God, I will trust you. Mm. So that was my stance from day one. Like, yeah. God, you brought me this far. Yeah. I mean, I've seen your hand like through and through and yeah. this far you have brought me, I will trust you. Yeah. So that was my initial stance. And yeah. it almost felt like Job when he lost his everything. His first reaction was, you know what, you, uh, you, give, you give, uh the Lord gives and the Lord takes, so blessed mm. be your name. That mm. was my stance. Mm. But later you see that Job now started spiraling yeah. and he got into a depression and yeah. asking when questions. When the reality and, dawned. When the reality hit. Yeah. So after the funeral and all that, I remember after the funeral, I went to a Hill, Hill song, came to Kenya. I went mm. for a Hill song concert. I was like, God, I'll trust you. Mm. But then as the days go by, the, the pain stings. Mm. I mean, it's a deep, deep pain. Yeah. It's You can't even... Sometimes it's hard to breathe. Yeah. Uh, and so that's where mm. I really had to wrestle with yeah. everything I thought I knew. Yeah. I had to wrestle mm. with my faith. Yeah. I wrestled with what I believed. I wrestled with life and yeah. everything. Yeah. Masi, I know this because I'm close to you, but yeah. tell us your baby's name. Uh -huh. um, and how... I don't know if to say how old or how young was he when he rested. How long had he been with you mm -hmm. before he rested? So my baby's name was Malachi. Yes. So we used and to... we are not going to cry. I, we're not going to cry. I have my tissue just in case. I was like, yeah, I'm prepared. <laughs> I'm prepared. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, but we used to call him Kai. Yes. It's my sister-in-law, Chami, yes. who came out like, yeah, Kai is his name. So mm. we used to call him Kai. Mm -hmm. So we stayed with him for six weeks. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah. after six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. When you um, when you're at this place where you are now starting to process, to really process that Kai is no longer with you. Yeah. What even now when you look back, what do you feel like you miss the most about him? Six weeks is when he smiled that week. Yeah. So the week he passed on was when he got his first laugh. Yeah. So I, we got to record that and that was precious. Yeah. And and I'm so grateful. You know, I, I, I look at it as motherhood being such a journey for, you know, when you're like, I had one day, I had six weeks, I had nine yeah. months, I had, that we're still able to say even in the grief, I'm mm -hmm. grateful that I got that, to see yeah. that smile. Yeah. Or I'm grateful that I was able to carry until yes. whatever point it is. Yeah. That, and, and finding pockets of joy yeah in the pain yeah um and there's a pocket of joy i always associate with you i'll talk about later on uh -huh. <laughs> um but i also want to talk about and I, I know it's obviously so it's difficult for us to unpack this but the, the reason why i mm -hmm. want us to do it is because there's a, a, a mother right now who mm -hmm. this is her reality yeah and i know when later on things happen in my life i, I would reach out to you and I'd ask you Masi, yeah. how do you how did you navigate this? Yeah. So <clears throat> I want you to take me back to the day when this is the day that Kai has rested mm -hmm. and you come back home. It's now you and Omari, maybe the nanny. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. How was that day like for you? What do you remember? Uh, what I remember is uh, getting back home. People were there. Mm. I mean, my family is just amazing. They have yeah. been like my rocks, yeah. uh, you know, next to Jesus, my family. Mm -hmm. God has used them greatly. So the yeah. people were there yeah. and uh, my family had prepared lunch. And so we ate meals and we stayed together. Mm. And that day passed. Yeah. And then after that, I had numbers for so long. I mean, I'm so grateful for everyone who came to visit me. Yeah. Like right from people I was with in high school. Yes. I mean, people I had not seen for, I think, 15 years, mm. you know, just had or so on social media and came to see me. Mm. So I was hosting for quite a bit. Yeah. And then at some point, my family was like, okay, let's give these guys a break. Let's mm. take them on holiday. Yeah. 
And so they paid a holiday for us and we went to Ena Shapai oh, nice. and, you know, had yeah. like a weekend to ourselves and mm. kind of process and now talk and, oh yeah. yeah. So with time, the numbers started dwindling as, yeah. as would happen. Yeah. And so, uh, and then Omari had to go back to work. Yes. And so now I'm left there alone and work gave me like my full maternity leave. I was mm. still healing from us. Yes. Yeah. I remember, oh my God, my breasts were in Gorged. Yes. I mean, I, I just have to say that because there's someone who's probably gone yeah. through. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so you had breastfed and now your body is wondering what's happening. Yeah. So I was so engorged for days. I was in pain. I had yeah. to take medications yeah. to stop the milk. I had mm. to do like natural routines, which mm. I don't know if they were working, but yeah. you know, they say put cabbage to yes. help the swelling cold go cabbage. down, cold yes. cabbage. Mm. And so I did all that. Mm. Uh, so Omari has gone back to work. Uh, oh, the, at least the milk, I think, ended within a day or two with okay. the medicines or three days. Yeah. So, but I was so sore and gorged. Yeah. yeah. So I'm at home now, mm. uh, alone. Yeah. During the day, I have the nanny. I'm looking at the nanny. I'm wondering, what will I do with her? Mm. I mean, because she came for the baby, but now there's no baby. Yeah. And before that, I was leaving with Omari alone. Yeah. And so she stayed on a bit because I was still hosting. Mm. And then when the numbers dwindled, I had to sit her down and say, you know, I'm sorry, but... I have to let you I'm go. I have to let you go. Yeah. I remember that day's tongue because now that's... Everything is just crumbling. Mm. But I remember that day I wept. Mm. I mean, I wept. Yeah. I, there are moments where you can't even pray. Yeah. You just weep. Yeah. And so mm. after that, now you start grappling by yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and the stages of grief. Yeah. Uh, so there's the bargaining mm. where you're like, oh, I wish this, I wish that. Yeah. Uh, there's the denial, mm -hmm. there's the anger. Mm. Now my faith is being stirred up. I mean, everything has just shaken, like my yeah. whole world. Mm -hmm. I'm like, God, how can you allow this to happen? I yeah. Mean, what's happening? Yeah. So there was all the questions, mm -hmm. and then I have the questions, and I feel guilty for having the questions. Mm -hmm. Like, is it now that I'm not trusting God? Yes. So I had like so many emotions going mm -hmm. on. A lot was happening. Then eventually the depression, mm -hmm. where you cannot get out of bed. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're. Just, you want to sleep the whole day. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but I thank God I have like friends who'd come and you know, not talking, let's watch a series, put friends and watch and yeah. sit mm. or would get me out, you know, let's go have a burger. Mm. But now there were those moments where you don't have that. So yeah. you stay in bed mm. you know, the whole day. Mm. Because Googling mm. and looking for information on how to heal on grief yeah. and, you know, uh, sleeping mm. at some point you, I, I I honestly wished I wasn't alive. Yeah. I mean, the pain was too much. Yeah. So, mm. uh, and yeah, I was linked up to still a mom. Yes. That time, Wanjiro was mm -hmm. doing it. And it was helpful because I was able to sit with the moms who were going through loss, yeah. whether it was miscarriage mm -hmm. or stillbirth mm -hmm. or advanced pregnancy loss. Yeah. And so I realized I'm not alone. We're all going through the same thing. Yeah. We all have that bout of depression yes. where you want to die. Mm. Like, oh my gosh. It feels like the end of it the world. It feels like the end of the world. Mm. Like, where is my baby? You know, mm. as in my whole life shattered. Mm. So yeah, just maneuvering mm. slowly. Mm. I w it was so unbearable. I decided I don't want to go back to work. I mean, my four months were lapsing. So yes. when I was on the because it was three maternity leave and I had taken plus leave days. Yeah. So when I got to the fourth month, mm -hmm. I quit my job. Yeah. I, I didn't even have the courage to go to work and hand it in. Is it, was it, you didn't want to be in the, in a familiar environment? Was that the yes. reason? That plus, I, I wasn't ready. I was not doing too well. Yeah. You know, anything would make me cry. Yeah. Like I was not ready to go back to work. Yeah. Uh, so I wrote a resignation, handed it to Omari, yeah. which he took to HR and, mm. you know, they processed it. And then so now I was writing my goodbye email because yes. I was not going to go to work. Yes. And then I wrote it and I remember our COO back then, I sent it to her. Yeah. Actually, it's my sister who said, just don't leave, don't burn bridges, you mm -hmm. just write an email. Right. So I wrote her an email and I said, oh, thank you for the time. Mm. And, 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 and. So she didn't respond that day. I think the next day, I see a call. Mm. 
And when you see a call from her, the first reaction is panic because, you know, when you're doing a production, so many things happen. So when you yeah. see a call from the yeah. CEO, then yes. you panic. Yes. So I was like, oh, my gosh. And then I picked, and yeah. she's like, Nancy, are you around? I'm like, oh, come see me tomorrow. Mm. I saw your email. Let's talk. Yeah. So I went to the office and she really just encouraged me. She's like, don't quit. If you need more time, yeah. we'll give you more time. Yeah. If you need therapy, mm-hmm. well, I'll talk to HR. Yeah. Uh, we'll get a therapist for you. Yeah. And I said, I'm still, I'm doing therapy also. It's like, it's okay. Mm. I'll give you more time. I go like, I can't handle the pressure. Yeah. But then I was doing 7 or 9 p.m. news. Mm. And back then, they came with a lot of pressure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so she goes like, it's okay. I'll give you a lighter shift. Mm. Then I say, okay, I want to go back to school as well. I've not been able to go back to school since yeah. I joined Citizen and yeah. I want to do my master's. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's okay. Mm-hmm. We'll give you a daytime shift. Mm-hmm. The school is what time? Evening. Yeah. What, 5.30? Yeah. It's okay. I'll give you a day shift. Yeah. You do your shift. Yeah. Then 5.30, you go to work. Mm-hmm. I mean, to school. To school, yeah. And then she's like, so what, what are you planning to do with your days if you quit? I mean, in this economy, she gave me a lecture about economy. <laughs> in this economy, you know, a one person salary yes. is not enough to run a household. Yeah. But like, I have a bit of savings. Like, savings run out. Yeah. I've been out of a job. Don't quit. Mm. By that time, I was like, okay. She, she, she was uh, empathetic. Mm. Yeah. And, and when you think about it, imagine if she had allowed you to quit, yeah. it would mean... You're staying home by yourself every day. Yes. Um, it would probably sink you further into that dark place. And that's what she asked. She yeah. asked, so your class is 5.30. What will you do between 9 and 5.30? Say, I'll do assignments and read or I'll volunteer somewhere. But this time I started thinking I'll volunteer in church. Yeah. You know, to, it's like, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I'll give you just today. Yeah. Come tomorrow morning with an office. Mm-hmm. Uh, to my office with an answer. Yes. So I thought about it. I talked to Maria. Uh, the next morning, I, I was like, okay, yeah. yeah, give me the extra time mm-hmm. and I'll come back. Yeah. She's like, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a light shift mm-hmm. and you can do work. And yeah. So I got another extra month. I was away from work nice. five months. Yeah. yeah. So by the time that month ended, mm-hmm. I had gone over into 2018. So yes. it's a new year. Yes. I was much better, had mm. done a bit of therapy, had processed a lot of my emotions. Yeah. Then I went, it was a new shift, mm-hmm. uh, daytime, uh, less pressure. Yeah. Uh, and then I joined school. Yeah. Which was a fresh, a breath of fresh air. Right. Because I was now doing something I've always loved, mm-hmm. uh, side doing psychology. Mm-hmm. And I met new friends, met lecturers, yes. and I found just a new community. A new community. Yeah. 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 You know, a lot of people, well, people process the loss of a child differently. Yeah. Um, there are people who, when they've lost a child, the immediate, like uh, we had, a, I had a conversation with um, another friend called Julie Karaoke. Uh-huh. Her immediate reaction when she experienced a loss of her baby was, I need to try for another baby immediately. This is the only way for me to deal with this pain. Mm -hmm. And then there's other people who are like, I don't want to hear about trying for a baby. I, you know, and it takes them a very long time to ever get to a place of, okay, I can try. How was it for you? Um, You've now, you you sort of, you're navigating the loss of Kai. You are at a better place. Why you, why you, let's try immediately or let's, not try. Where were you? Not try. Okay. In fact, I was, at some point I told my husband, I don't ever want to try again. Yeah. No, oh, that crushed him. But with yeah. time, it changed. I took a while before I was ready to try again. Yeah. So, yeah. And then now I was focused. My days were full. I'm doing work. I'm doing school. I'm mm-hmm. like, I need to finish school. I'm not yeah. ready to try again. Mm-hmm. So I took a while before I tried again. Yeah. And went through the motions of grief and mm-hmm. the pain and mm-hmm. all that. Mm-hmm. Until a time I felt okay. I think, I think with I'm, also a lot of prayer. And yes. Yeah, I was like, okay, I think I'm ready. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we tried. Yeah. It didn't take too long. Yeah. And I got my baby boy. Yes. He's now four years old. Uh-huh. He's called Manuel. Manuel. Yes. <laughs> Manuel means 
God with us. Yes. My mom-in-law is on who named him Manuel. Your so. babies have beautiful names. Ah, thank you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so Manuel is four. He's four yes. now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I thank God for him. He has been yeah. amazing. Did you have at any point when you were pregnant with Manuel, um, did you have any triggers as far as maybe just... Um, did his pregnancy at any point remind you of your pregnancy with Malachi? Did you ever feel like, was there a fear attached to it? Or did you feel like, no, this is a fresh thing. It's going to be, everything's going to be great. There was a thought of fear, but they didn't last. God gave me a peace that I, yeah. I did not understand because I thought I'd be really fearful. Mm-hmm. But at, at the beginning, yes, but yeah. at some point I was... Okay. Yeah. I mean, God gave me a peace that surpasses all understanding, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. And yeah, I went through another C section. Yes. And he came, and oh, there was a bit of fear at the beginning, mm. you know, but God's grace was just sufficient and yeah. all the support I got from everyone. Yes. Yeah. I, I love that, Masi, because um, I think what we naturally expect is. Yeah. You know, there was loss, so there'll be a lot of fear. Yeah. Uh, and yet fear is not what God wants for us. Yeah. And we've yeah. talked about this also here. We've yeah. had this conversation of yeah. fear can really paralyze you. Yes. Totally and completely. Um, but, you know, hearing you say yeah. that there might have been an element of it at some point, but yeah. God's peace took God. over. That's a big peace. deal. That's yeah. a really big deal. Because through the process, I was now my relationship with God was after the fighting or the toiling after yeah. the beginning, mm. I, I I let go. Yeah. And I said, you know, God, I trust you. Yeah. And so with trust, the fear mm-hmm. went down. Yeah. 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 So um, you have Manuel. He's a ball of energy. I have met him. He is so handsome. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> looks like his daddy looks nothing he like does. me. I'm like, oh my gosh. He looks <laughs> really? <nothing like. laughs> After I carry you for nine months, and then you look like you're duplicate of your father. We need to start a support group. I know. <laughs> for mothers who whose children look nothing like them. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so um, you know, you've had Kai, you've had Manuel, and then you've had, and you you get pregnant again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my journey continues. Mm-hmm. And after a while, like, okay, Manuel went with me, the sibling, you yes. know, he's so energetic and yes. all that. So like, okay, let's try it one more time. Yeah. You know, get a perfect family of two children. Yes. And... That's good. We call it a day. We call it a day. Yeah. So yeah, I conceive again mm-hmm. and go through pregnancy. Yeah. Uh, then I get my baby, a boy. Yes. Called Matteo. Mm-hmm. So Matteo, when he was born, he was at first born with a bit of breathing complications, yeah. and then he did not last for long. Now he lasted. Clustered is a bad word. He, he, lived. He, he lived for two weeks. Yeah. And then passed on. Yeah. And then went to be with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so I was, now this time I was numb. Yeah. I couldn't believe it was happening again. I'm like, again? Yeah. Like, God, I mean, what is happening? I yeah. thought I, we resolved not resolved, but I thought yeah. that, you know, well life would, t- would turn out different. Mm. And so I was numb for the longest. I remember I, I, even crying. Yeah. I couldn't cry. Yeah. I mean, uh, man, I was numb. Mm. I remember during his funeral, I was leading choruses. I remember. Oh, you remember. Mm. I was leading choruses. Mm. I was so numb. But yeah. even with the leading choruses, mm. I still decided, you know, God, I have decided to trust you. I mean, when Kai passed on, there was the times where my faith was shaken and I was not sure if you're good. I was not sure if, you know, those that I had resolved that. I was like, God, we already resolved. I will trust you no matter what. Yeah. So I will trust you even now yeah. with this second loss. Yeah. And so again, we begin the process of healing again. Yes. And yeah. You know, when you when you say you were 
you, you look back and you realize you are numb. I have come to look at it as the gift of numbness. Yeah. Because even when you think about it, if you hurt yourself, you get a deep cut. Yeah. Uh, they probably need to numb it yeah. and then work on it yeah. because when you feel the depth of that pain and you know everything that needs to go through to make it better and stitches and everything yeah. it's too much for you to, yeah. to handle yeah and I, I, I feel like you know even in my own life the times when the pain has been so much I look back and I see the for me the pattern has been there was a numbness yeah. and I see it as a gift that God gives us because if you Masi could have processed in its entirety what you that you were burying another child in that moment it probably would have completely broken you it would have yeah and when I went into therapy okay my family is amazing they looked yeah. for uh, a therapist, she's yes. a pastor. Yes. Hi, Pastor Moni. <laughs> so I remember in that phase uh, when I went into therapy, she explained the numbness. Yeah. So like, uh, your body has three responses: mm. fight, flight, freeze. Mm. So numbness is freeze. Mm. So that's why when you're in an accident and say maybe your hand gets chopped off or something happens you go into freeze mode and you will not feel in shock. the pain, you're in shock. Yeah. So the shock shields your body it does. from just the intense pain. Mm -hmm. So there's that in also grief. Yeah. So I was numb as on yeah. freeze. It's yeah. just protecting me from like the intensity of the pain. Yes. But one of the things she said is like, you have to process, mm -hmm. you can't stay numb forever. Exactly. And because numbness will just, make you a zombie in life. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're numb, you won't even be able to feel joy. You're an autopilot, it you're almost. Autopilot. Mm -hmm. So we walked through therapy and uh, I had to get to a point where I faced this head on. Yes. And it's tongue. Yeah. And that's where Jesus just really helped me. Yeah. Helped me together yeah. and helped, helps me get back up. I didn't know how I was going to get back up. Mm. But... Yeah. God. Look at you. But God. But God, Mercy. But, but God. God. Um, I want to touch on something that I alluded to earlier, pockets of joy. Yeah. And just how significant they are yeah. um, to a grieving heart. And then we want us to talk about hope for a grieving heart. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember when during Mateo's farewell. Yeah. Oh, we were, you were seated in the car, you were sitting in the car, Omari. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, Omari, I and I was there, yeah. and, and we're, we were just talking about, I guess, the losses that, that there have been between us. And um, first of all, I need to tell my people that I will bring Omari. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and a few other gentlemen to also help us unpack this journey from a, a, a man's perspective. Yeah. But Omari is one of the funniest guys I've ever met. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I remember him just, we were talking about the story of Job, but there's something that he said in that moment. And it was so funny. I mean, it, it was so funny. And mm -hmm. I remember how hard we laughed. We laughed so hard. Yeah. And um, for a moment we were like, oh gosh, we had to, we had, we had to bury our people might be wondering why we're... <laughs> it might be sending a conflicting message. Oh, but no. I remember also... Um, us saying that yeah. it's okay to experience that pocket of joy yeah. in that moment. Yeah. Because 90 something percent of the time you're crying, you're, you're sad, you're yeah. overwhelmed. Uh, but when you get that pocket, you take it and, and, and not feeling guilty about it because uh -huh. we feel guilt when you, yeah. you, you feel like I shouldn't smile. Yeah. Uh, people will think I'm looking too happy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, and I think we should allow each other to experience those pockets and not questioning why is this person not, they're not uh -huh. grieving enough. How do we want them to grieve? We don't all <laughs> grieve the same. We yes. could have gone through losses, but I'll grieve very different from you. Yeah. I mean, so many things inform how you grieve, your personality, yeah. your story, yes. your background. Yes. I mean, we all grieve, grieve differently. No one mm -hmm. can definitely say that I understand what you're going through. No yeah. one can understand what mm -hmm. you're going through. It's, yeah. it's so personal. Right. So I remember the story. I think I remember what, the joke. <laughs> so we're talking about Job. Yes. So Mario was like, Job was just living his life and then God told the devil, do you see myself and Job? It's like, 
Me, as in, me, I'm just living my life. As in, no, don't why me? me? Don't see me. Me, I don't want to be seen. <laughs> okay, it's more funny than that, but I mean, I just thought it's so Because we were funny. like, have you considered my servant, yeah. Matthew? No, I no, like, no, 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 no. I don't want to be considered, please. Me, I'm okay. <laughs> living my soft life somewhere. <laughs> So he, he said it in such a funny way. Like, yes. Okay, God. Ah. No, I don't want to be considered. Please, not not me. Skip, skip. <laughs> don't consider me don't again, consider Lord. Me. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, and I think uh, laughter has been one of the things that has helped us buffer. Yes. Because it's funny and yeah, friendship. Mm. I know many people separate during loss, but um, yeah. God just held us together yeah. and faith. Mm. I mean, I love that oh, he's drawn closer to God. So, so have I. Yes. So we just leaned on God together as a couple. We mm-hmm. pray, we yeah. debate about the Bible and yes. all those things. And yeah. when you're down, I mean, so we have sometimes I'm down, he picks me up. He's yes. down, I pick him up. I mean, yes. we've just had gone through this journey together. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and now you have birthed Another baby. Can yeah. we talk about this baby? <laughs> <gasps> Hope for a grieving Oh heart. my goodness, Masi, you are a whole author. Imagine. To people. <laughs> okay. Hope for a grieving heart. This is a book by Masi Omari. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, la, 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 la. This is our Kosho Giamuana, yeah. you know, tonight. <laughs> oh, my oh my gosh. gosh. Tell me about this beautiful piece of work that you have put together. Okay. So I, after the loss of Matteo, yeah. uh, God really kept speaking to me through his word, through so many different ways. Mm-hmm. And so I had get a nugget, I write it down somewhere, I get a nugget. And after a while, I felt he pressed in, in my heart to write a book. Yeah. I was like, oh, I know, I mean, mm-hmm. I really valid about it. Yes. And then I had a dream mm-hmm. when I dreamt that I was doing an exam, I was doing form four, yeah. English writing paper, and I need to, I needed to be writing it, but I decided yeah. not to and went to do other things. I was like, ah, I'm good in English, I can write it later. Mm-hmm. So I left the exam room, went, and then came back and the examiners were picking up the papers. And I'm like, I haven't done my paper yet. Yes. Give me, I finished. It's like, yeah. well done. So I sat there thinking, what does that mean? Mm. And at the same time, I was reading my friend's book. She's called Koki, and yes. she writes about her journey to writing a book and yes. her loss. Oh, and yes, I know Koki. Koki. Yeah, mm-hmm. Koki. And so that very day, I opened the chapter where she's talking about uh, she had a dream because yeah. she was also dealing about writing a book, and she yeah. had a dream, and God, in that dream, directed her and said, if you don't write, you'll lose your talent. Oh, wow. Something close to that. Yes, so I yes. read that at the very same day I had the dream. So I texted Cook immediately. I'm like, you do, you can't believe what just happened. Yeah. I had a dream yesterday night. Today I was reading your book and mm-hmm. I land on that same page where you had a dream mm-hmm. and you wrote the book after God just directed you. Yeah. And I was just like, Mama, write. Mm-hmm. Write, start where you are. It'll all be jumbled up. It'll just put it all down. If yeah. God has said, just put it down yeah. and he'll, he'll guide you. Mm-hmm. And so... So I started writing and I kept it silent. Yes. And I think the beauty about writing it then, I was again on maternity leave for the four months. Mm -hmm. So everything was raw, everything was vulnerable. Mm. So I think God just wanted me to be as raw as I could be. And so I penned down everything that I was learning as in all the, I go, I look at all the stages of grief and how I went through that, Mm -hmm. Uh, faith Mm -hmm. and God and just, life and eternity. I mean, I, I structure the book in different ways. Yes. Just touching on life mm. and grief and yeah. God and God in the place of grief. And yes. I mean, it's it's expansive. Yes. I have to say that I, when you sent me the manuscript to this book, I read it and I was like, who is this woman? You know, I think oh, I remember telling no, you, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. who is yeah, she? Ma. Like, I felt like, like I'd, I don't even, I didn't even know you, you know, there's yeah. so much that God has put in you. Oh. And when I look at it and I see the magnitude of the things you have had to go through and to overcome, mm-hmm. it makes sense, you mm-hmm. know? And um, I like to to talk about this analogy of the disciples when they were in the upper room after Jesus had uh-huh. resurrected yeah. and they, you know, they started speaking in tongues and there were like tongues of fire uh-huh. on their heads. Yeah. 
they they couldn't see their own yeah. what was on their head but they could see each other's yeah. so i look at you masi and i see the flame on your head i see the you know just what god has deposited in you is so big it's it's so much wow. and you know i know it i don't know if it comforts you or makes you feel uh, some type of way but the things the battles you've endured mm-hmm. are equivalent to the victory that you have and the power that you carry as well so yeah. this is so so exciting to have you put out yeah. i know people will want to know where they can get it mm-hmm. so give us your social handles people yeah. can follow you guys if you i mean if you have walked the journey of grief um even if you haven't because you know we don't choose it and we don't know when it will come you need to have this book i feel like it's a kind of book that If you know somebody who's gone through loss, go immediately and get it. Like today, get it immediately. It's a gem that you need to have. Where can people find Thank it, Masi, or find you? Ah, uh, so follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. I'm not much of a Twitter person, but okay. you can look for Masi Chageo Mari. Yes. And I'll have the details, mm-hmm. and I'll also give you the details to pin, yeah. like uh, on the posts on how yeah. to get the book. And even after that, I'm going to start support groups yeah. for anyone who's going through loss. Uh, October is Infant Loss and Miscarriage Month. And yeah. So that's the reason I decided to launch in October. Yeah. And so I'll start support groups. Mm-hmm. So just follow me and I'll give the details yes. of how the support, free, the support groups are free. Awesome. I mean, I just want come as you are, yeah. where you are, and we'll go through the motions because grief can be so isolating. Oh, yeah. I mean... No one else can get you. The people who got me the most were those who had gone through the same loss and mm. like you and yeah. so many other moms who stood by me. And yeah. I want to be that to other people. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. So there's a book and there's the support groups. Yeah. So let's journey together and yes. see where God will lead us. As we finish, Masi, I want you to do two things. The first one, I would like you to um, speak into the camera and speak to a mom who has maybe experienced one loss, maybe two losses, maybe many more losses. And they feel not even the, I don't want to try again, but just feeling like I am done with life. I, they have checked out because I, I, it, I know it's possible to be alive, breathing, going to work, doing, but you have checked out of life. I'd like you to speak to that woman. Mm-hmm. And then the second thing I want you to do is because you are a mother of three boys, I would like you to share just a very short message to, especially to Malachi and Mateo, but also to Manuel because he's here with us for us to love him <laughs> as as their mom. What would you say to them? So let's start with the mother. Oh, okay. So a word of encouragement. Mm-hmm. It feels like it's dark. It feels like you won't be able to get out of this hole. It's it's overwhelming. Uh, I don't know, maybe you feel like you don't want to live anymore. Uh, no one gets you. Maybe you're being pressured to move on quickly. It's not that automatic. What I can tell you is God's mercies are new mm. every single morning. Mm. So today has its mercy, tomorrow has its mercy, the day after. So lean on God's mercy. I know maybe you can you you may be angry with God, you may be questioning your faith. It's okay. Just go to God as you are. Like David, he'd go when he was angry, he'd tell God, God, why? Mm. Or when he was depressed, it's like God, I'm going to die today if you don't do anything. I mean just be as truthful as you can. Be raw and honest. And God loves you. I mean I just have one verse that I kept on yeah. thinking about today mm-hmm. as I was coming. Yeah. Oh, let me get it up for you. So, mm-hmm. Romans 8, 35. Mm-hmm. So maybe you're feeling that God has left you. First, he says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Second, Jesus understands everything that you're going through. He came to earth as a human being. He went through the emotions. Jesus wept when Lazarus died. Jesus yeah. wept. So it's okay to cry. I mean, when you feel like you're overwhelmed, cry. Jesus uh, 
toiled with his purpose when he was at the Garden of Gethsemane. And yeah. uh, he was, he sweat blood, he toiled that much. And he was like, God, if you can take this cup away from me. And yet God did not. So you have a heavy cup. God did not take it away from you, but God will never leave you nor forsake you. When Jesus mm -hmm. was on the cross, he was like, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mm -hmm. So you, you're going through this cup, you feel like God has forsaken you, but he hasn't. Mm -hmm. He is there and he will help you and he will walk with you. Yeah. And so the verse is uh, Romans 8, 35. Mm -hmm. Can anything ever separate us from, the, from Christ's love? Mm -hmm. Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble, mm. calamity, are persecuted, or hungry, mm. or destitute, or in danger, mm. or threatened by death? And so nothing can separate you from God's love. Amen. Nothing can separate. And he Amen. loves you. You may not feel it, but God loves you. He does. And he's there for you, and he will carry you through even the darkest days, you will stand and you will rise and you will come out with a great testimony. Mm -hmm. like, I believe it. He has good plans for you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Even I say amen to that. Amen. <laughs> okay. So can your message to your boys and then. My boys. Mm -hmm. <gasps> uh, for me, okay, for Kai, uh, Malakai and Mateo, finding acceptance was knowing that they're being raised by Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I remember once my mom dreamt that uh, they're in heaven and they were doing Sunday school with the other kids and uh, Jesus was leading the Sunday school. Mm -hmm. So in my head, I, I, you know how this picture for when Jesus said, let the little children come yes. to me. So when I see a picture like that, I just automatically think, think of oh, them. I see them like on yes. Jesus' feet, like Jesus is teaching them Sunday school. But then with Moses, it's like, yeah, that's Moses. Yes. And that's <laughs> Abraham. Yeah, yes. Eve is the one who got you into all this trouble, but it's okay, she's forgiven. <laughs> and so I find peace in uh, just yeah. knowing that they are at Jesus' feet. Yes. They have no pain, no suffering, and they're okay. And yeah. God, had their plan. They yes. lived the two weeks and the six weeks. Yes. And, you know, God ordains all our days, Absolutely. even before we're born. Yeah. So God had ordained yes. that they will live the two weeks and the six weeks. Yeah. It's, it's still, you know, it's still painful, yeah. but yeah. God, yeah. I mean, I, I trust that the they're hope. in a good place. Yeah, the hope we have. The hope we have yes. is that even uh, David said, you know, when his son died, uh, I will not, you, you cannot come to me, yeah. but I will come to you. Yeah. And so I live my life in faith, believing in Jesus mm. and in eternity. Mm. And the word, I think it's in Hebrew, says that the glory that is ahead of us is much greater than yes. the suffering that we have here. Yeah. We may suffer here, mm. but it's a short span when you think of life. It's this short and eternity is like forever. Yes. So I'll suffer here, but mm. I'll suffer in for Christ a little while. for yeah. a little while. Yeah. But the glory that awaits, it's my baby is already yeah. enjoying that glory. Yeah. So... One day yeah. we'll enjoy that glory and God will use everything for yes. his good, Jeremiah 29, 11. Mm. Yeah. 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 Oh, Romans, wow. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 20, 11. 9, 11. Yes. yes. So, <laughs> and Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good. Amen. So yes, my babies, I'm happy that you're growing in Jesus' feet yes. and I love you guys to death. Yes. <laughs> and Manuel, mm. oh, he's such a joy. I mean, yeah. he's given me so much reason to live, so much life uh, has been, yeah, everything. Yeah. So I'm grateful for Manuel and I pray that God will use him and yeah. in a mighty way. Amen. Yeah. All right. Pretty much. Yes. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think that that's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Marcy. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your heart with us. Mm -hmm. And I just pray for every blessing over your life. I, I pray that people in the corners of the earth will get to Amen. read this book Amen. and go through that devotional and that it will lift and bring so much healing. And to your life as well, Marcy, thank that every you. day, every day you heal. Yeah. Strength to strength. Every day. <laughs> Marcy is on you every, every mo single morning. Absolutely. And you know, when you go through the waters yes she is with you yes. when you go through the fire you will not drown she was, you will not drown yeah so mama you will not drown yes he is with you yes and uh, yeah yes. all right okay we i mean we can continue but we will have to stop <laughs> i <laughs> promise i will bring her back with omari and we can have a, um a, a different the conversation from a different angle 
But this has been Masi uh, Chege Omari sharing her heart with us through loss, finding healing, finding strength, birthing a book. And all this just to say to you that there is life beyond the grief, beyond the pain, that you can move forward in spite of the things that have happened in your life. And I pray that as you watch this, for any person who's feeling like I, I'm, I'm just stuck, I have blamed myself for this, that, and the other, that as you listen to these stories, the weight can be, uh, you can offload that weight. Don't carry it any longer. Keep sharing with your friends, with your family, in your small group, watch these videos, have discussions. Let me know um, what your story is, what you've been through. Let's see if we can have you here, share your story with us as well. But I'm really so, so honored to have you. Journey with me here on Being Kambua. Keep subscribing and I will catch you next time. Nina Openda Sana. Bye-bye. Yeah, so went to the new Guyana. Yeah. And we he this we were in a room. I remember we were in a room with a photo of our mom holding a baby. Yeah. When I received now when he came and he did the scan because he used to do everything there and yeah. he said there's no heartbeat, so it's confirmed. Yeah. And my heart sank and he told us, I'm going to give you a few minutes mm. just to feel what you need to feel, yeah. and then we can discuss it in my office. Yeah.